Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. Tomorrow, February 1st, is World Hijab Day 2019. World Hijab Day sounds a bit odd, and it is. It's basically a day where many Muslim people push Western women to experience the hijab, to put it on in, in solidarity, and to see how it feels. What you don't notice when you first look at it is that it is also supported by fundamentalist Muslim sources that want to make the West more familiar with the hijab, an obligatory veiling for women in Islam. The hijab is, as explained, obligatory in Islam. It's not a choice. Islam is very clear on that. The Islamic scholarly consensus is very, very clear on that, and has been for 1,400 years. When some people come out today and say, I wear the hijab because I want to wear it, because I find it so beautiful, so empowering, that gives a very, very wrong implication, a very wrong image. In many Muslim countries, in Muslim societies, even in non-Muslim countries, many women, girls from very young ages, children, are basically socially forced or forced by their parents to wear the hijab. And once they take it off, if they dare to take it off, they will be threatened, disowned, expelled, tortured, killed. In countries like Saudi Arabia and Iran, you can be severely punished for not observing the hijab. There is nothing empowering, nothing free, nothing beautiful about the hijab. And there is nothing to understand about it. You can refer to older videos in which I explained that the hijab was basically forced on women by 7th century Arab men, by warlords, who wanted women to wear the hijab, who wanted women to be disguised, not be recognized in public by other men. An obligation within a religion, an obligation that you as a Muslim woman better observe or you will be punished by society, by the law, or by your religious authority. Now, before taking this too long, I want to give the word to someone else, to Yasmin Mohammed, who is one of the frontrunners of this new movement, uh, No Hijab Day, which is in contrary to the Hijab Day, which tries to explain to more and more people that there is nothing beautiful, nothing free about the hijab. If you want to understand the hijab, if you want to understand the social circumstances of the hijab, listen to people like Yasmin Mohammed, who experienced the hijab, who suffered from the hijab throughout their lives. Hi, my name is Yasmin Mohammed, and I'm the founder of Free Hearts, Free Minds. If you want to learn more about me, you can go to confessionsofanaxmuslim.com. So I want to talk to you about why I feel so strongly about the No Hijab Day campaign. The campaign is something that I have an intimate understanding of. I know what it feels like to have the hijab forced on you at a young age and then to not have the option of taking it off when you're older. I was born and raised in Canada and the hijab was forced on me at the age of nine. And from that moment on, I was no longer allowed to play on the monkey bars, go swimming, ride a bike, do any of the fun things that children do that I still wanted to do. All of a sudden I was told from now on you have to cover yourself every inch of your body except for your face and hands and you are to be a wrapped up clean candy as opposed to a dirty candy that is unwrapped and covered in flies and dirt. When I got older I wanted to remove the hijab. When my family found out about this desire of mine they threatened to kill me and then they disowned me. And that's here in Canada. So you can just imagine how much harder it is for women in countries like Saudi Arabia and Iran and other Muslim majority countries. Women in Iran can be arrested for removing their hijabs and the same for women in Saudi Arabia. As well, they can be abused by their families. They can actually even be killed not just in Muslim majority countries either. In my country here of Canada, a young girl named Aksa Parvez was 16 years old and she was strangled to death by her father because she refused to wear the hijab. So I understand what it feels like for these women who want to remove the hijab, but who are absolutely crushed under the pressure of their societies, their governments, their families, their communities, to keep the hijab on their heads against their will. And that's what 
no hijab day is all about it's to talk about that problem it's to address that issue it's to talk about these women that are not free to make those decisions they are not free to even decide what they want to wear on their bodies so on this day i would like to celebrate the women that are fighting against the hijab i'd like to support them and i'd like them to know that we hear them we see them we cheer them on in their fight for freedom.